Okay, <clears throat> deep dive on um, ovarian biology slash menopause slash germline biology. Um, ignore all the alcohol behind me, that's for a party. Okay, why, why is this important? Um, so ovarian biology <clears throat> is important because it leads to germline biology. Uh, germline biology is important because it's the root of all aging um, and our mortality in general and our position as uh, basically just vehicles that the quote unquote true life uses to um, exist on this planet. So <clears throat> if we are to rise above our position as vehicles for the actual life, the immortal life, then we've got to understand the nature of that immortal life. What rules does it follow? Why does it have to do what it does? Because like our society where, you know, every, every layer of society has its own issues and problems. When you look at things that seem to have more ability than you, those things are also dealing with their own set of problems, including things like um, cells that uh, infinite regenerative potential. They have to obey rules and <clears throat> we need to know what those rules are. Okay, so that's the, that's the synopsis. Um, so what do we, the first step is diagnostic tools, right? The first step is going to be, okay. Um, the first step is going to be understanding the, the signaling lifespan, the signaling changes over the lifespan of people with regards to germline biology, which we can start with menopause, right? So the idea is there's a, there's a list like um, anti-malarian anti hormone, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, uh, progesterone, uh, estradiol. There's a bunch of hormone levels that may or may not be changing over the lifespan. So what we want, and it's time to share screen here. Okay, so what we want to see um, is something like this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, nine. Um, does that work? Yeah, okay. And we'll do a black this. Oh, wait, what? Okay, all right. So there's two types of of graphs, we have like maybe something like A, M, H here, geez. And then we have age on the bottom. Um, we wanna see something that looks like, this is, I have no idea what AMH is gonna look like. Um, I have seen one graph that looks kind of like a shotgun and I'll, I'll pull that up pretty soon, but this is, you know, what we want to see is something that we that creates um, some sort of pattern um, versus age, and then we also want to see um, maybe so the same thing a m h uh, versus oh whoops not versus age but rather versus percent lifespan. Um, and why do we want to see this? Because age could be misleading us um, that if, if people's lifespans are, are variable, which they totally are. Um, people die anywhere from, you know, 30 to 100 uh, to sometimes age zero, very sad. But there's a very big variance in lifespan. And so what we want to see, maybe by looking at something like this, maybe it becomes like really, you know, like tight grouping, um, whereas before it was like a, a big distribution, maybe it turns into a tight grouping or maybe it goes the other way. Maybe something that looks like a tight distribution, I don't know, I don't know why it would be more variance if you just go present lifespan. I, I would assume that that would always um, reduce variation, but <clears throat> these, are, these are the two types of things that I would like to see. And then one of this for all the different biomarkers associated with uh, menopause. 
And then what we can do is we can find out any kind of correlate, like patterning or, or correlations or biomarker, like then we, you can draw a curve, right? You don't want to draw a curve. What you want, what you really want is, um, or what I, I would like to see anyway, is something like this. So we have a, we then have a, a like an, an area, right? And then what you do is you say, okay, here's where you are. We have a line, uh, let's do that in uh, green or something. I don't know, it's fine. Um, and so the, oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, there we go. What you wanna see is like, if your line is here, versus up here, you have an age range which you could possibly fall within, right? And here, um, percent lifespan, maybe we, we one, one more, one more of these would actually make a lot more sense. And the last one to make is, last one to make is, Um, percent age to menopause. You can't read any of these things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Percent. Age to men. No. Jesus Christ. Hmm. Menopause. Okay. Um, we have this one. My God. All right. Uh, apologies. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, age. And um, percent lifespan. Okay. All right. All right. So we we're, here we are. Okay. Um, and then this would be all um, AMH. Right. Okay. The idea here would be, again, um, so maybe it's like, Maybe it's like this, right? And what you wanna know is where on the curve are you and how close you are <clears throat> to menopause is essentially, I mean, for, for women. And then for males it'd be andropause, same thing. But so we wanna know, given a biomarker, what's the trajectory that biomarker is supposed to take um, towards menopause and then where an individual is on it and to know the variance. If you put a, a curve here, like a, a single curve to try to explain this data, it's not, it just won't capture the truth about the situation. So it's always gonna be an age range. It's always gonna be a, a band or um, some kind of a, and the narrower the band, obviously the better, but um, as we will see, I did some preliminary looking for biomarkers and it doesn't look good so far. So let's go through to, let's see, anti-molarian anti hormone versus age. 
Uh, images. <sighs> Bing is so bad. Okay, hold on. Um, oh wait a minute. I'm still I'm still on Photoshop. Okay, sorry, my bad. Stop share. Um, we're going to do this. We're going to go to um, share screen to Google. Um, Anti-malarian hormone versus age. Okay, <clears throat> so hopefully you all see this and we're looking for scatter plots. And so we're going to do a scatter plot. All right. So here we have anti-malarian hormone. This is great. Um, oh, I see. One of these is a log graph, and that's why it's spread. And then the other one is a normal graph, and that's why it's got a sort of like a log distribution. Okay, all right, all right. This is fine. Um, <laughs> why would they put age on the left-hand side? Jesus Christ. Okay, let's copy this. Um, and let's create a new, uh, and let's change, let's change our share to be sharing just the full screen. Okay. And we're going to do here. So um, uh, paste. Um, so this is just to get ourselves a rough idea. Of where we're at in terms of data distribution. Um, scatter plot. Okay. Looks like this was for breast cancer. Um, it looks like the distribution is pretty much the same. This is estradiol, this is anti-malarian hormone. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> we've got some, we've got some data here. Let's try to normalize it a little bit. probably as good as it possibly can. Okay, we'll do a pace like that. We'll try to do, this is zero, this is 20. Oh. Uh, try to match it up, 15 is right there. 10 is right there, 30, okay. Looks pretty good. Ah. Okay. Um, so these two sets of data seem to correlate with each other. Whoops. Um, how about this one? We've got one to ten. Twenty, thirty, zero, ten, 
can uh, let's try to do like this and this. This is just just a rough approximation. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of this looks pretty accurate. Why is it going into the negatives? That's my question. This one looks weird. I think that they did something weird on that. Anyway, cursory glance of Google shows that there's some kind of like, it just sort of like converges to zero, um, which is not great as a biomarker. So the problem is, is like, you can tell where you, you aren't. So, so if we were gonna take AMH um, as some kind of a, a proxy, right? And what, like when it hits zero, that's definitely menopause probably or something. But what about all these people that are hitting zero, <laughs> they're close to zero levels, like way over here. That's kind of bizarre. Now, this is the first day of me looking into this whole thing. Um, and by first day, I mean like I've, I've looked into it a little bit in the past, but like now I'm actually, well, actually I'm, I'm at negative one days. I'm supposed to start tomorrow, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So <clears throat> if I had to draw data off of this, this uh, cursory glance, it would have to be, Okay, so it's like this. Oh. No, no. Uh, have to do it all in one brush stroke so it doesn't have um, multi layered opacity. Okay. So this is what the wedge looks like, um, which means, for instance, that if your line, uh, bu -bu oh, whoops, sorry, stroke color. So if your line was up here, you could only know that you weren't, you could only know that like, Well, hmm. Okay, if your line was up here, you would know that you're not, how old you're not, you wouldn't how, know how old you are. Does that make sense? So you would know that you're not greater than 35 biologically, um, right? But you wouldn't know how old, like between 35 and zero, what your age, like where you are on, on the, there's no like, like the, it's not like a, an arc or like a progression type of thing. It's more like a system of like, you could be anywhere, right? You, you could be anywhere from here to here, but you're definitely not in this sector. And then um, with this line, if you come at the further down you come, the more, unstable the measurement becomes so the less it's going to tell you so if you're down here what what you what you're looking for with us with a biomarker like this is to know how close a person is to age of menopause that's the goal here right to figure out like if you can tell somebody you have this much time left and here's your trajectory right but there's no trajectory here um maybe you can tell about a person's trajectory towards zero maybe that that might work Right, I guess that's that's what you're looking for is tra tra trajectories towards zero. So I guess that 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 still works. But if if a person's value was like three, um, if their measurement value was three, then and that one's a, a logarithmic, so it doesn't line up quite right. But anyway, whatever. If a person's measurement was three, you wouldn't know whether they were 15 years old. <sighs> or 45 years old, there's no, like you can't, right? If, if you just had a spot value, now you're probably gonna wanna get like a, a value over time, but for a snapshot, there's like, there's a, pot, there's a potential that they could be 15 or 35 or 45 or up to age 50, I guess, 
Mm, unlikely, maybe 45, 48 or something like that. But that's a huge range and that's not gonna be useful. So maybe, maybe a combination of biomarkers if you can, okay, okay, let, let, let's think about this. If you slice off different chunks from different biomarkers, maybe one of them like expands as you get older. And so you can have this, this system, but in an opposite side. And by piecing together multiple biomarkers, you can see where a person is on the trajectory. That makes sense. That, that seems viable. Okay. It's like, um, I don't know if you ever played Clue, you know, where you're trying to like, there's like a, a vertical and a horizontal for the logic system. And like, if you can, if you can put one, like peg one known variable, you can eliminate like across two different dimensions of logic. And that, that's kind of like, if we can use this, we can like slice off chunks of, they couldn't possibly be at this point because their marker is this. And then we take another biomarker and say, we couldn't, they couldn't possibly be in this other section because their biomarker is like this. And then if you, if you just do that with enough pieces, you'll converge and tri triangulate their um, biological age down to a specific port place where you can tell them, okay, here's what's going to happen. Here's how much time you have left. Here's the, um, et cetera. Okay, that, that makes sense. All right. <clears throat> But this is all just cursory stuff. Um, so let's let's consider. Um, let's go to Science Direct now, um, and actually go and do some real science and look for um, scatter. Well, we wouldn't want a scatter plot. Let's go eight anti molarian hormone age. Um, Leukocyte aging, let's do, oh, do they have any diagrams? Uh, it doesn't look like, sorry, um, SE, does that work? Mm, sorry, hub. Uh, okay, that looks more correct. Ah, God damn it. Um, levels for age, adjusting for age. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Okay. No, uh, no, these are not what I'm looking for. AMH, age and BMI adjusted. I mean, these are, these are really cool, obviously. They don't have AMH versus age, but they're, This, first of all, this spread, this, this data trail looks really interesting because it's like, wow, that's interesting. Um, oh, it's a Gaussian curve on the bottom. So by definition, there's only one data point at every, any given point. Okay, never mind. That's not as interesting anymore. Um, and then this is what, some kind of adjusted versus unadjusted. They're trying to find, okay, this is not interesting. Uh, Okay, whatever. All right. Lame. Um, maybe, uh, maybe age scatter plot. There's no way this is going to be a, a good search to predict cycle outcome in cycle. Predict cycle outcome. <sighs> mm. 
useless. Just, just so useless. Where's the variance? Like, <laughs> okay, all right, fine. Um, inhibitions, this is excellent changes to the physical menstrual cycle. Um, Oh, no, <clears throat> box and whisker, or just these confidence interval graphs are just so useless. Oh my God. This is also, this is on the cycle of ovulation too. Okay. Um, testosterone. These are not, none of these are versus age. Okay. Increases with ovarian and natural size. Unique epigenetic profile with the information will be. This is, that would be interesting. Um, I know, I know genital distance. Looking for very specific things. Um, Hormone as well, hormone age versus age. Okay, and this is, um, sorry. So I have to reserve. Uh, refresh. Uh, well, crap. I guess they only got the first page. Okay. <clears throat> It's really hard to search for scatter plots. Um, see, then the next level of this is to get the actual data so that you can get the, you can put it into a dynamic format and into um, put it into a, a format where you can just, you know, you can overlay it with other data and it's the actual data points rather than just an image of the data. So. Um, and that requires probably contacting the scientists that were involved in making it, which is a tedious process, but whatever. Okay, so science. Let's look at, maybe let's look at something else. Um, progesterone versus age scatter plot. Progesterone, age. Progesterone, progesterone, effect on receptor, <laughs> in plasma, so it's just on two weeks stability. No. Um, spotted seals. So there's your trigger all the intermediate inflammation. Um, none of these look like they're correct. Uh, progesterone age. Uh, human progesterone age. Um, Uh, okay, <clears throat> this is going to be, uh -oh. 
<clears throat> test. Test, test. Okay. This is sad. This is sad times. Effective aging on the human, okay. All right, here we go. We've got something from 1994. And we're gonna do Sci-Hub again, and then we'll do this. And... Oh my God. <laughs> <coughs> Look, I'm, I'm being frustrated, but I mean, seriously, like, I'm sure that there's, there's like a whole body of research that had to happen before people came to the conclusion that, um, yeah. Okay, stuff is blowing up on my phone. Okay, well, anyway, the work is cut out for us. So whatever, whatever. Whatever we want that doesn't happen here, um, we're gonna have to build the data for that. And that's gonna be a lengthy, it might not be a lengthy process. If we do cross-sectional data collection on like, I don't know, like a dozen hormones and stuff like that, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> if we do a, like a cross-sectional studies on like a dozen hormones and try to get a bunch of different shapes of these graphs, we could possibly slice off different chunks and say, okay, there's no way you could be at this, this, or this stage, at this, this, or this stage, because this one biomarker is like this, this other biomarker is like this, this other biomarker is like this. If we can get a, a complete picture of what the, the buildup, the, the premenopausal stages look like, we can tell people, we can give people accurate predictions. We give people accurate predictions. Then we can, I mean, that's a, that's, that's phase one. So phase one is diagnostic tools and being able to accurately predict and to validate those accurate predictions um, for how much time a person has left before there's, there's certain specific phases. So the first phase would be before you start to have health problems with your child. Second is health problems for yourself. Third phase is like when you're just not able, when, when actual menopause takes place. Cause there's like a, there's the actual act of menopause but before that there's like all sorts of health complications that can arise. So you obviously wanna know when those things are gonna occur. So there's a bunch of milestones that if we could accurately predict all those milestones would create tremendous value for a lot of people in terms of planning out their lives. So that's the first step is the diagnostics. The second step is using those diagnostic tools to then manipulate the age of menopause. There's gonna be natural variance. We should be able to investigate why that natural variance occurs, how much of it is environmental versus genetic. If it is genetic, we should, have, we should then get very accurate tools by simply looking at the genetics to be able to predict when your age of menopause is. If it's not genetic, if it's mostly environmental um, or behavioral, then we can find out what behaviors and environmental conditions affect the age of menopause and then create natural therapies to alter it within the window that is currently available, which is like what, 38 to 55, something like that. That's a pretty large window. Um, <clears throat> if beyond that, then the third step, the third phase is going to be um, making it so that you can extend the maximum age of menopause past the current maximum, which is essentially what it, what it really is. It's like, you're trying to affect aging, but you're using a different time scale, right? So rather than affecting the entire lifespan, you're affecting reproductive lifespan, which the effects should be noticeable faster. So it's like a proxy, right? It's gonna be a proxy, um, which is one of these things that people are always trying to like, we need to have like a, a model of aging that's like really fast, so we can do better iterations. This is faster, but it's clearly still not fast, right? But it's, it's faster than trying to do an overall lifespan. If you can change, maximum age of menopause, which is a very clear cutoff. Um, it's almost like you could almost imagine it like a, a certain type of death, really, 
then then that becomes a proxy for can you affect the aging process in general, in my opinion. Um, so you, if you can extend maximum age of menopause, that's akin to extending maximum lifespan in, in my worldview. So that's the third step. Um, and the fourth step is to eliminate it entirely, uh, which, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of species, not as many as you'd think, it's like a couple dozen species that undergo menstruation or maybe more. And then there's only five of those species that actually have menopause. So clearly it's possible to just not have menopause and still be alive in the world and, and exist and be fine. Those, those other species are fine. They're doing just fine. Um, but so if we can eliminate it in people, what are the consequences? What will happen? Why do we even have it in the first place? We got to understand these things um, before we eliminate it, but we also have to understand how to eliminate it. Um, it's almost like a microcosm of just aging in general. Like everything's just on a shorter time scale, which is great because that's what people were looking for. So <clears throat> that's the plan. Um, I think it's a pretty good plan. Um, and we will now see what happens. So start tomorrow. In the meantime, I have to write a whole bunch of these summaries, which are tedious summaries for something completely unrelated, um, which are going to be tedious, but uh, it's part of my current job. Okay. All right. Nice. This is, this is good. It's a good start. And um, I have to pay attention to what's going on here. All right. Stop recording. Oh, stop sharing. Stop recording.